Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to be covering the basic schedules of reinforcement by providing you multiple examples. We actually are doing this class because we have a very special student who was stressed in class the other night. And I said, hold up, go to bed, sleep on this stuff, and come back. And I'm going to do a class for you next week. And this is the class. So we, we do these for you guys to help you. And this is the class that the foundations are very important. In order to study really most stuff in ABA, you need to be very familiar and understand the basic schedules of reinforcement. So without any further ado, listen up, you have to understand this shit. And if you've never taken a study notes ABA class before, we write out our notes. So I hope you have a piece of paper with you and some markers, glitter, all the different things that you need because we're about to kill it. Okay, so, and I always like to tell you how many pages of notes so you're not scared. We have one, two, and that's it, okay? We have two that we're writing and then I will show you a graphic and that's it. All right, so we're gonna title this page The spectrum of reinforcement. Boom. So as behavior analyst, I was actually speaking with my friend yesterday who was like, I think our nurse test seemed like very, she's like, I did so well on your quiz on Instagram um, that Katie, by the way, created, who's here, amazing. She's like, I got every question right. And she's like, I, I mean, she is like, she watches all the study notes, ABA stuff. But she's like, I think it's very similar to nursing. And, you know, they have to talk about like, well, which intervention are you gonna use for with, which health issue? Well, when you're a VCBA, we don't prescribe, you know, amoxicillin or Adderall. We prescribe different schedules of reinforcement or different consequences to increase or decrease the behavior that we want to change. So, and we know reinforcement is a consequent that if it's reinforcement, it is something that happens that increases the future frequency of behavior. Right, so if the behavior happens in the future, we know reinforcement occurred. So we're gonna drop the spectrum over here just to understand how it works. So this is the line or spectrum. We have one side of the spectrum that is, sorry, you know I gotta make it cute. That is, we are reinforcing every instance of behavior, okay? We call this a CRF, which stands for continuous, not sure if I spelled that right, but you get the point, reinforcement. This is when we are reinforcing every instance of a behavior. reinforcing every single response. So this means that we are on what we call an FR1 schedule, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, but we use this during acquisition or when we're trying to teach someone a new skill. So if I wanna teach someone, hey, when you push the on button on your computer, it's going to turn on, right? If it's on an FR1, and assuming it's charged, we'll just keep that variable, that assuming it's charged, right? Or a continuous schedule of reinforcement. Every time you push the button, you the computer will turn on. Or every time you complete a problem on your math worksheet, you'll get a sticker. 
or every single time you, you know, every single time that you go to work, your boss says to you, hey, it's so nice to see you. If you had a really nice boss who took notice of you like that. But we use this during acquisition. So if you get any test questions about when would you use continuous schedule of reinforcement, it's when you're first trying to teach someone, hey, if you engage in this behavior, this is what will happen. Right, especially let's think of like manding. If we're teaching an individual to mand or make a demand, we want to teach them like, hey, your words have power, or you know, when you communicate, it has power. You say iPad, you get the iPad. You say candy, you get the candy every time because we're trying to teach them the value. So some examples here are let's say we turn on the sink. We're blessed where we live. You know, you turn on the sink, every time you do it, water comes out. You put a dollar in the vending machine, push the button, every time a drink comes out, all right? Light switch on, right? You put it on, it turns on. These are things that are an FR1. All right. Now we have the opposite. So the opposite of reinforcing every single instance of a behavior would be what? Taylor, this class is for you, baby. So you're gonna be picked on. It's intermittent reinforcement. Well, the opposite of every- Oh, extinction, sorry. Perfect, I knew you do, okay. Extinction. The cool people write it as EXT. So extinction is reinforcing no behaviors, okay? Now here's a little thing you need to know. It is only extinction if there was previously reinforcement. Because what it means for extinction, it is, the color themes over here, you know? I don't know if withholding has two H's. Withholding reinforcement. So if you're withholding something, that means that there had to have previously been something that you could withhold. So let's say a behavior was previously reinforced. Like we had that putting a dollar in the vending machine on a continuous schedule, right? Every time you do it, you push the button and the drink comes out. If it's extinction, you are withholding reinforcement. This is reinforcing no instances of behavior. Right? We use this too. Eliminate behavior. So on one they really are opposites. Continuous reinforcement is reinforcing every instance of the behavior. And we use it when we want to start making someone engage in a behavior, right? To start it. We want you to do this all the time. Now extinction. I don't want you to do this at all, right? Now extinction would be you put your dollar in the vending machine, which was previously on a FR1 or continuous schedule of reinforcement. You push the button, nothing comes out, right? You post a picture on Instagram, people usually like it. This time, no one likes it. Extinction. Now, in between there, and what is more, you know, uh, more like simulates real life and what happens in most situations is what we call, cool people, right? It is INT, which stands for intermittent schedules of reinforcement. And the word intermittent, if you understand English, and I always say for this test, if you understand English, you are at, and you speak English, you're at an advantage because you could use your knowledge of what these words meant before they ever applied to ABA to understand concepts and break them down. So the word intermittent means 
some, but not all, like intermittently, you know, it happens. So this is when we reinforce some, but not all instances of behavior, right? So it's that kind of thing where it's like, you know, sometimes I go check my mail, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Um, sometimes, you know, Casey and I work together, she might call me, I might answer sometimes, or more like I call her and then I get her annoying voicemail that says like, hey, it's Casey, sorry, I'm not here right now. Leave a message, namaste. And every time I'm like, the namaste has got to go. And she's like, I leave it. It's like my, it reminds her of her 20s when she was traveling Nicaragua in a hippie. All right, so she answers me very intermittently. This being said, intermittent schedules we use to Taylor, do you know? Maintenance. We use it for maintenance. Yep. Maintenance or maintain behavior, okay? So let's say like I had used a continuous schedule of reinforcement to teach someone about manding, right? Like, hey, anytime you mand, I know you're highly motivated for candy, you're gonna get it. But like real life, every time a kid asks for candy, they're not gonna get it, right? And there's some shit that you'll never get. But it's more natural that like, yeah, sometimes you might get candy when you ask, sometimes you won't, sometimes you'll get the iPad, sometimes you, it won't be an option, you know? So these are the intermittent schedules. And we also call these our basic schedules. of reinforcement. In this area right here is what we are focusing on today, okay? The basic schedules of reinforcement. This is what this mini class is about and I had to. They scheduled a sub by set. Okay. I hope all of you guys watched Anna Delvey. If you don't know, now you know. It was too perfect. All right. Casey could do the accent better. Here we go. And all right. On this page, we're going to be drawing. If you don't know this about me yet, I'm obsessed with drawing. Um, I call them Punnett squares, which like I don't even know if that's the real term, that's, but I just remember that from bio five ever ago, um, or a window pane, or an Excel spreadsheet, or um, what else? A four square for- Okay, four square. Anything else? Boxes. <laughs> Multiple hold. exemplars, see how we're teaching already? <laughs> yes, perfect. All right, so on this, I need you guys to draw out on the- On the side, we're going to label these, okay? First, we have fixed variable. And this is our prefix side, meaning these are how some of the schedules are going to start in their naming. And then on the top, we have ratio and interval, okay? I'm scared to say this English term. I might be right. Is that a suffix? meaning like the okay. second part of it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna write up what these different things mean. So in order for you to really understand what we're talking about today, you need to understand what this means. So if we say something is fixed, all right, it means, whoa, whoa, whoa. How did that even happen? All right, it means a set amount. So if you're saying like, hey, I'm gonna give you a fixed amount of dinner, you know, I'm giving you a set amount. And this is hashtag constant, meaning this fixed amount is going to stay constant, all right? Now we have variable on the bottom here. 
And variable in that, you see the word varies, right? So this means an average amount. So on average, this amount, right? Like it's gonna vary, but you'll probably get about, you know, five stickers. I don't know, whatever it is. Someone wrote, it wouldn't be a true snap a class if the iPad did not work correctly. <laughs> this is true. All right. So now we're looking at our suffixes, okay, of these schedules. And this, the first one we have is ratio. Ratio means responses. So when you see the word ratio, you should in your head say responses. Now we have interval. Interval is an amount of time plus a response. So when we think of like an interval, we think of time, right? And a response. So we're gonna write what these mean now. Now, of course, you know, I'm not best at, so I gotta just make this a little cuter. AC, I can't believe you're not getting in here with the Anadelvi stuff. It's so basic. I'm so much better at it than you. So, I know, and you make me like sound so Paul. <laughs> here we go. All right, now. We're going to talk about the this top left quadrant, cell A1. Casey and I have been doing a lot of stuff in Excel lately. <laughs> Shoot me. And we are talking about right here, and it's called a fixed ratio. Okay, so you take the name from the side, and then the name from the top, and it says fixed ratio. Okay, and so fixed ratio, and I'm going to write it out as an example ahead of time. We're going to say if you have a schedule that is an FR5, okay? Translation, what this means is you need to complete five responses, and I should say correct responses to get the reinforcer. What would an example of this be? This would be like, hey, you buy five drinks at Starbucks and now you'll get the reinforcer next, right? Your next drink is free. So this is a fixed ratio schedule. Another example, you know, I might put Casey on the spot for some in a minute, right? Every fifth page of your Cooper book that you read, you could have a glass of wine. Or what about you're running? Every fifth mile that you run, you can walk a mile, whatever it is, right? You know, like an applied example, like in, with your kids, if you're a teacher or you're working um, in a clinic, you know, they might get a happy face sticker after completing five math problems, right? So if they complete five math problems, they get their sticker. Um, a lot of that you see in token economies, right? There's a requirement uh, of responses before they get their reinforcer. If you think of it with like your husband, if you put your husband on FR5, I do this without him knowing. Um, I, he asked him when he gets home from work, he, he calls him, I gotta do my chores before he can like get in his like comfy clothes. I treat him like a, like a client, I swear. And so I might have him an FR5. So he needs to empty the dishwasher, um, do the laundry, vacuum, um, clean the counters and put his clothes away, right? And then he gets like sexy time, maybe. Not all the time, but so that's actually probably a variable schedule, but either way. But if it was every five times, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Or a lot of, you know, when you're working with a client and you're doing DTT, Okay, you might be like, oh, I know this kid I'm working with is on an FR5. Every fifth card we do, they get a little break. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's an FR5, fixed ratio five. And by the way, for all of these four basic schedules, I'm gonna keep it at a five. So you could see like, oh, look, this is a VR5, this is an FI5, but they're how they look different. All right, and also really I, question. FR, I see that question, that's a good one. FR fixed ratio. Let's say I said an FR1 
fixed ratio one. You're saying every one response is going to get reinforced, which is the same as what we said on the page before as what? Continuous reinforcement. Continuous reinforcement. So they are hashtags for one another. FR1 is equal to continuous reinforcement. All right, so now we're moving down on the page to this bottom left quadrant. And we are going to write, now we're talking about a VR5, okay? So we said the word variable on the side here means an average amount and the word ratio means responses. So this VR5 is saying, you need to complete about five responses to get the reinforcer. Meaning, it's not always gonna be exactly five, right? But on average, and this is like a lot of things in real life, you know, especially if you're a teacher or BCBA, and you're like, it, you're not there to sit and like reinforce, well, maybe if you're a one-on-one. -on -one every instance of behavior. So like sometimes teacher might go around the classroom and you know, like, oh, then someone's raising their hand. Let's say we have a chronic hand raiser, okay? And about every five times you raise your hand, I'm gonna call on you. It might be after 10 times, it might be after one time, it might be after two times, but it's gonna average about five, right? That's a variable ratio schedule, okay? So an example we have here is, any of you guys ever been on dating apps? I'm sure some of you guys have, okay? This is 2022. About five right swipes, okay? About every five right swipes you make, meaning like I think this person's hot, whatever it is, you get a match. I don't know, I did like the Jewish dating app, JSwipe, hashtag ad. Um, actually, it didn't work out that well, so um, not ad. <laughs> ad, hashtag not ad. Anyways, every time like, you know, you like someone and if it's a match, you get this like, they do like a, the, the Jewish dance of like raising chairs because it's a Jewish dating app, LOL, right? So about every five, you get a match. Now, we are going to move on to interval schedules. You want to give another example? Yeah, I forgot I was muted because I, um, yes. Okay, I want to give um, a place for- Wait, I only gave one, you're right. Um, so a variable ratio, um, we can also talk, you gave two, but that's okay. What was the other one? Oh, slot machine, guys. We can't forget about the slot machine. That is the most commonly example for a variable ratio. That's why people develop gambling addictions because they don't know when the reinforcement's coming. If you put all your money into that pull thingy, whatever they're called, clearly I don't gamble. Slot machine, she wrote it right there, <laughs> pull thingy. Um, you're not gonna get up. If it, you, you got it once and then all of a sudden you're not getting it, but you keep putting money in and then, oh, you got something. You're not gonna get up because the next person might get it, right? You're so resistant to extinction, meaning your behavior is gonna be maintained right? Because you don't know when it's coming. Um, so that's what we talk about when we say most resistant to extinction, meaning the extinction, when you withhold the reinforcement on that variable schedule, but sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't, you're going to continue to engage in the behavior, right? Extinction doesn't work very well with this. Um, so imagine you're on a FR1 or continuous schedule of reinforcement, right? Every time you put your dollar in the vending machine, a drink comes out, okay? Now let's say the machine is broken. You don't know this. There's no SD saying broken, right? So you put your dollar in, you push the button and nothing comes out. You are going to notice pretty quickly if you're on a continuous schedule of reinforcement that like, oh shit, this isn't working. I'm on extinction, right? You'd be an idiot to go put 10 more dollars in. <laughs> no fun. You know, you'll do all the other weird like extinction things, pushing the button, fending in the machine, whatever it is. But if you're on a variable ratio schedule, let's say like, again, the slot machine, meaning about every 10 responses, you know, you're going to get a payout. 
And let's say the machine is broken and has no ability to do payouts anymore. You are going to be like, I am not walking away. Like, so you're really on extinction. There's no reinforcement available. But because it's variable, you're not going to catch on so quickly. You're going to be like, holy shit, no way I'm walking away from this machine right now. I've already put it in 20 times now. That means like the next one must be a winner, right? So that's why we say a variable ratio schedule is the most resistant to extinction. This is yeah. why. This is why you like fuck boys who like only respond to your message every now and then, or like every whatever, every thirteenth message you send. You're addicted to that shit, and maybe they literally put you on hold. You're like, oh no, but they always do this. Like, oh, yeah. right? Most resistant to extinction. All right, moving right along to fixed interval. The only thing I want to add to that real quick, sorry. And I think this is important if you guys are teachers or BCBAs, if you're wondering how you can implement a variable ratio schedule in your classroom, go to Cooper, page 306. And there's three different awesome, really cool procedures that are task analyzed out. So you could easily implement them and understand how a variable ratio schedule works in your setting and how it can help with groups of students, individual students to make your life easier. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. You're welcome. Case of, case of real old. world. <laughs> All right. Now we're moving to an FI5, fixed interval five. We see the word fixed means a set amount or constant. All right. Interval means amount of time has to pass plus a response. Okay. So what does this mean? This is when we reinforce the first Correct response after five minutes passes. If we're on an FI5. So this means an amount of time has to pass. And then the next correct response you engage in will be reinforced. So an example here is let's say you were locked out of your cell phone, right? You let your kid play on your phone. They put the wrong password in enough times. And now you are, so let's, it starts off saying you're locked out of phone. If you're on an FI5, you have to let five minutes pass and the next correct Password entry gains access. So how does this work? During that five minutes that your phone locks you out for, you could type your password in as many times as you want, but it's not gonna do anything. The reinforcement is only available for the first correct response following time. So that's why we say there's a time component, which is five minutes here, and a correct response required, right? So time has to pass plus a correct response. And an example I like to use a lot also is um, just because I've been a regular patient with all my lupus issues. When I would go and I had like terrible pain, they put me on like a morphine drip, okay? Or not drip, I'm sorry, that'd be cool. Um, <laughs> that you could push the button. I don't, they don't want to like bring me out like addicted to, you know, opiates. So what they do is they set you on, well, I was on a FI two hour schedule. Every two, two hours has to pass. And then I can push the button to dispense more medication, whether I do it like right after, like a minute after that two hour passes, or even if I do it 30 minutes after. There has to be time that has passed. So it's a fixed interval, two hours. And the next correct response will, you will access reinforcement. That's how a fixed interval schedule works. You might do this with a student, right? You might say, okay, well, you know, I need to see you working for five minutes. And then like, when I see you working after that, right? I'm gonna come around and, you know, let you go out to recess whatever it is. Casey, you have anything you want to add here? Um, yeah, I think we're all on fixed interval schedules when it comes to our pay, 
right? There's a time that must pass. And it's not like the truest definition because yes, you, do you need to be showing up for work? Yes, you do, right? To, in order to get paid, you do. So a lot of us are on FI 14 days every two weeks. My husband's on an FI 30. He has to wait 30 days to get paid. I'm on an FI seven. I get paid every seven days. So we're all on these interval schedules in real life. Because here at Snapple, we know more consistent re uh, reinforcement is much better. I know. Now. I do that all the time. I'm like, can I talk to your company? Like this, guy, they're like a huge company. And like waiting a month to get paid is so not- A month is weird. It's so horrible. Yeah. So thanks Snapple for balancing it out. Thanks. Yeah. For you, yeah, we got the data to back it up. All right, so now <laughs> we're on a VI5, okay? Variable about an average amount of time needs to pass plus a response, okay? So this is when we reinforce the first correct response. Following about five minutes. And by the way, it doesn't always have to be minutes. You could do a fixed interval two weeks. You could do a fixed interval, you know, five hours. But here I'm just making it in the example of minutes because I feel like it. So for a variable interval, an average amount of time needs to pass. And then if you're doing the correct thing after that time pass, you will get reinforcement. So an example of this is, you know, let's say your supervisor or your boss comes around, I don't know, about maybe every three days, about every three days to come check on you to make sure like, you know, you're doing things correctly with your client, whatever it is, you're taking data, whatever, right? So it's about every three days, but it might be after five days, might be after one day, sometimes depending, right? And this is more like realistic real life. Everything in my life is variable. My moods. Your boss comes to check if you're doing your work about every five minutes, keeping it on the VI5. It varies, you know, you know, your teacher gives you pop quizzes about every six weeks. Sometimes it might be a little shorter. Sometimes it might be longer. Ew, I hated pop quizzes, come to think of it. Don't like that. Someone asked about an example of microwaving a meal, right? The time has to pass. And then you can open the microwave to get it. That would work for, yeah, that would work for fixed. Yeah, perfect. With was, the, well, the reason I was thinking about that is because now that Kobe just switched to milk from formula, doesn't have the machine anymore that like warmed it, whatever. I'm like, oh, like, do I need 30 seconds? Do I need 23 seconds? Like it varies around that time. So it, it, you know, depending on the way that you write the question, you know, that context matters. All right, so now everyone got the notes on this page? Awesome. So on this page is what behavior looks like on each of these schedules. So we're gonna start off with a fixed ratio schedule that we spoke about over here in this top left, right? And you could see it right here. So fixed ratio schedules, right? So let's say you're on an FR10. And by the way, in these pictures, they represent reinforcement, all the lines that happened. You could see it's the same amount. Let's say it's an FR10. Every 10 responses, are, you get reinforcement. So what happens? With these schedules, we see high overall responding
and we see something called a post reinforcement pause, which we describe as a break and run pattern. Write that down, I'm gonna talk you through it. So, FR schedule, remember we said a set amount. So you know how much you need to complete to get something. This being said, if you are on an FR 10, I'm teaching a YouTube class. I'm teaching a class. I was going to the doctor. I'll have to have Julia cut that out. Take a timestamp. <laughs> um, so a fixed ratio schedule, set amount. So let's say he's on an FR10. You know, I need to get, I need to purchase 10 drinks before I get my next drink free. So what happened? Okay. So here on the bottom, you're purchasing. Yeah. You're purchasing your drinks going up. Then you get your reinforcement here on your 10th drink, you get your next one free. Then we have what we call a post reinforcement pause. You see this like, meaning you stop responding for a little. Time is passing and you're not responding. Why? Because you're like, oh shit, I have another 10 drinks. But as you start going again, you go slowly. And then when you get closer to the 10, that's when you're doing like two a day stops at Starbucks, right? You have a higher rate of responding because you know you're close. You get it? Boom, the reinforcement happens here. You have that post reinforcement pause. The post reinforcement pauses, I'm gonna put in pink right here. Zoom. I'll put post reinforcement pause, post reinforcement pause. Because like you just did it. Like you just got the reinforcement. So like, I, I know I got another 10, I'll wait. That's what happens. Now, this is, so on our fixed ratio schedules, we see this stair step pattern. And if you see anything asking about a break and run, they're talking about this, break and run, break and run, all right? So fixed ratio schedule, we have high overall rate of responding, we have post reinforcement pauses and we're gonna have post reinforcement pauses on any schedule that is fixed because you know, like, oh, well, either this amount of responses I have to do again or this amount of time has to pass anyways, all right? We are now going to move on to a VR schedule, okay? And let's say this VR schedule over here is a VR5. You can see the red one. And I recommend you guys drawing these out also, if you look on page 311 in your book, there's an awesome little diagram for you to look at. So we here have, if you notice, look at the slope here, like a very high rate of responding, right? So a VR schedule has a high steady rate of responding. You don't have those stops like you have on a fixed ratio schedule. Why? Because you don't know, right? You're always responding because I don't know, even though I just got reinforced, I might get it again soon. And this schedule is, what did we say about it in terms of extinction, Taylor? Most, <laughs> was like, most resistant to extinction. <laughs> I'm gonna call this Taylor's class, okay? Most. I'm okay with that. <laughs> most resistant to extinction. This is Taylor's version. Get it guys, Taylor Swift reference. Actually, no one got my references in class when I talked about Taylor Swift. So, all right, so VR, high steady rate of responding, most resistant to extinction. And this is what's happening here is this, okay? You are driving right along. Okay, let's say you're on a VR5. Oh, but it looks like about, I don't know. 10, 20 happen this time, you get reinforced. But you stay steady, you keep going. I don't know, let's say 10 happen this time. Five. 
five. This is probably not a VR five. I'm making it a little higher, whatever it is, maybe like a VR eight. I could change that. Well, there's not really numbers on the sides. So I can make it what I want. Um, right. And then a few passes. And like the reason you wouldn't stop because there's times like this, you see this, like one response had to happen, let's say, and you got reinforced again. So there's no stopping. This is a variable ratio schedule. This is the highest rate of responding. All right, moving right along. And because we are also limited on time in this class, we do go through like different ways to remember these in the collective, but so we are, we are cruising right along. Now we have, we're going to the black schedule here, the fixed interval schedule, okay? So fixed interval states that, you know, five minutes has to pass, then you engage in a response right here and you'll get reinforcement. Five minutes has to pass, you engage in the behavior after a pattern, you get reinforcement. You guys see this pattern that it's looking like? And these post reinforcement pauses? Well, oh my God, my color theme's not matching, not cool. All right, so the fixed interval schedule, this has low to moderate overall rate of responding. Well, it has post-reinforcement pauses, just like the fixed ratio schedule, right? Because we said fixed, you know what the requirement is. And what happens is, we're gonna write this down then I'm gonna show you it, the response rate accelerates at the end of an interval creating hashtag scallop effect. Zoom in a little in case you can't see that. So let's say, what did it do? You need to you know that I'm trying to think of a fixed interval schedule. Okay. My brain. All right. Let's say you know that every day. Talk about the dentist one if you want. Okay, we can do that one after. You do that one after. Oh, actually, no, that is a good one. You're right. Okay, I'll do that. Never mind, because now I forgot my other one. All right. So let's say you go to the dentist every six months. You're on an FI6. Okay. Six months, FI six months. Okay. So let's say you blah blah blah. And let's just say we're looking at teeth brushing behavior. Okay. Let's say, okay, so you just got re you just went to the dentist. Let's look at the next one, okay? You just went to the dentist, got your teeth checked, whatever. You kind of slow down on the brushing, right? It's that post-reinforcement pause. As you're getting closer to the six-month appointment, you ramp up your brushing. You're flossing, you're brushing, you're using the little pick in between your gums, right? That's that. It increases the rate of responding as you get closer to the, you know, reinforcement. And, and then you're you going to get that reinforcement. The doctor sees you. I was going to say, you have no cavities. That's reinforcement for your toothbrushing behavior and flossing behavior. Perfect. Exactly. Or let's say, you know, you get your favorite, you know, blog delivered to your email every day at noon. Okay. So that's like on a FI 24 hours. Once you just get it right here, you're not going to check for a while until you get closer to noon. Again, the next day, you're going to check all the time, right? more, but it's only gonna be reinforced once that time passes mm -hmm. and then you check and then you get the reinforcement. And now I know you use the variable interval schedule of, as the boss checking, but picture, switch it. The boss comes every 30 minutes, right? So you're working, 
right before that 30 minutes comes, what are you going to be doing? Oh, I'm emailing. Oh, I got my, mm, uh, for right after they come, I have 29 more minutes that I can goof off or whatever, right? But right when they come, if I'm engaging in that email response or whatever it is, they go, good job, Casey. Nice work. Okay. Now I'm like, Ugh, I'm chilling. I'm pausing. Right. So you could do it on both, but yes. I love it. Perfect. All right. So now we have the last schedule we're talking about, and it's a variable interval of, we're going to talk about variable interval five. Okay. So a variable interval schedule. I'm trying to be chill, even though my thicknesses and my pens aren't consistent here, but you get the point. Okay. So this is constant, stable responding. And it's a low to moderate rate of responding. So it's a green one here in case you missed that memo, right? So let's say it's about every five responses or about every 10. I don't know, that's what it looks more like. Um, so what happens? Let's say about the amount of times, let's say you pretend like you love my Instagram live story. Okay, we'll pretend, all right? Get on about every, like, I don't know, 12 hours, there might be one, okay? So here after like six hours, you checked and then, you know, it was on, okay? I don't know, maybe after 10 hours, you checked and it happened to be on. Right, or you might be checking in between, but you're checking pretty regularly, you don't know, but it just maintains your behavior. You're like, I know she does put stuff out, blah, 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 blah. It's pretty steady. But who knows why we don't see those post reinforcement pauses? Because, because I'm not. It, yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say, because you don't know when you're getting get reinforced. Exactly, because it might, who knows? I might be feeling myself that day or find a new filter I love and I'm just gonna be like putting myself out there every 30 minutes, you know? So that's why it maintains the behavior steadily. Now I have a question and Casey, I did not prepare you for this. But let's say that you have two schedules of reinforcement available. Mm -hmm. You have one that's an interval schedule you have one that's a ratio schedule. Mm -hmm. Both of them, you could access reinforcement, right? I don't know. You could put like an actual example in here. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to allocate your time? Like according to matching law, like are you going to spend more time on the schedule that is an interval schedule where time needs to pass? Or are you going to spend more time on the schedule that is a ratio schedule? And you can see it in this graph, which is so beautiful. Definitely a ratio schedule, right? Do you see the rates of responding on the F, uh, VR5 and the FR5 um, are steeper than the VIs? Because when you know the, like, if I have to engage in five behaviors to get it, I'm going to do those five behaviors, right? But I might have to wait a certain amount of time and then do it. Like, that's going to be a slower rate of responding. So with matching law, um, on a variable schedule, I'm sorry, an interval schedule, there's going to be like a proportion, right? Like four times more here or 10 times more here, depending on the scenario. But on a variable ratio and a fixed ratio, if I say, you know, you can produce 20 widgets and get $100 or produce five widgets and get $100, which one are you going to do? You're going to uh, ratio, right? Yeah. So in that case, it's always- Wait, I think you said both ratio by accident. You said you could produce 100 or you could produce five. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. You could produce, so either way, you could produce five widgets or every widget after an hour gets you reinforcement, right? So I would do a ratio. I would engage in those behaviors to get the reinforcement faster. Perfect. Love I would it. wait the hour. I'd be like, okay, I'm just going to do five then, right? Because you feel like you're in control of getting, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Guys, those are the basic schedules of reinforcement put on a graph. 
And now it's time to play a game. I like to call it Name That Schedule. How we're gonna play is you are going to write out in the chat what schedule it is. Extra points if you write out, like instead of just writing like VR, you write out like VR and a number, extra points. So let's see how you guys do. Send your message privately to Casey or myself so we don't have any reactivity. All right, we ready. Here we go. All right, you get paid after every fifth report you submit to insurance. Beautiful, I got right answers. Amazing, and you put the numbers. Casey, you getting a lot over there? Yeah, I am. All right, the answer is FR5, okay? You guys were all right in my group. Because this is saying you had to do five behaviors. One report writing is one behavior. Two reports, three reports, right? I see that someone put a fixed interval. This has nothing to do about time, okay? Because you could write those reports in one minute each, or you could take three days each. It doesn't matter. But whenever you finish those five, you're going to get paid. Nice work. All right, next one. Your crushed response to your text about every 11 texts you send. Nice. Amazing. It's a VR 11, right? You engage in a behavior about 11 times and then you will get reinforcement. Maybe after five times, maybe after 20. I don't know, as long as it averages 11. Nice work. You get paid once every two weeks. Nice, I love how you guys are putting the numbers too. Amazing. All right, it's an FI2. And if you wanted to be more specific, you could write FI2 weeks. All right, you guys are doing great. You get paid $13 for every 50 emails you send out. Good job. Nice work. I see everyone over here got it right, and that's amazing. It is FR50. Okay. The number 13 is there just to confuse you. Okay. It could have been $13. It could have been, you get a sticker, a high five. It just happened to be a numerical number we gave you, okay? So the answer is FR50. And it says every 50, okay? Not about 50. All right. It's noon and students are released from class at 12.30 p.m. for lunch. This one I wrote, it is tricky, tricky. Meaning you could leave then. Oh my God. Don't worry guys, I didn't get that. Sandra, you got it right. All right, this one. I was like literally being an asshole to give it to you guys, but you know, I, they call me a bitch, a behavior bitch. Here we go. <laughs> the answer is FI 30 minutes, okay? This is a complicated one. Why? Because I said it's noon. 
And at 1230, when you get up to leave, you'll be allowed to go. But before then you won't. So the, and if you do the math, that's 30 minutes. So fixed interval, 30 minutes needs to pass before you can gain access to that reinforcement and leave. If you okay. said FI 1230, so did I. <laughs> so no stress. All right, here we go. All right, a car salesman gets a commission on each sale. And give me some hashtags too, if you're feeling it, you know? Each sale he makes. Yes. All right. An FR1 or CRF, amazing, or continuous right. schedule of reinforcement. About every four interested customers that the car salesman speak, uh, spends time chatting with buys a car. All right, we are on a VR4. Hence, about every four, right, that he spends time with. So he's engaging in the behavior of spending time, but about every four times he does that, I probably have to operationally define that also, right? He buys a car. You give your dog a treat about once a day when your dog pees outside on the grass. Dana, you got this. All right. Alejandra, you did too. This is a variable interval 24 hours. Now, Leah, I have a, an argument to make. Is Can it also be just a VI1? And, it, and it, as long as you specify it's one day? Yeah, sure. It's not a wrong, it's not a wrong answer. No, okay. it's not. It's exactly it. Yeah, you sorry. Can say it you, both could... ways. you could say VI 24 hours or VI one day. As long as you know which is which, they're the exact same thing. Yep. So or you could have done... I don't know how many minutes are in a day. You could have done like VI, blah, 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 minutes. 375,000 minutes. <laughs> They're all stimulus equivalents, you know, same thing. Yeah. So their time has to pass about 24 hours and then a correct response, peeing on the grass. You check the mail multiple times a day to see if your new Snap and Merch has arrived. However, the mail arrives at around 4 p.m. each day. So you check at 5.32 and sure enough, your new coloring book is here. The answer is a VI schedule, all right? So, I could have been more specific here, but I decided to put, you know, on a VI, you know, I know the time, so it comes around 4 p.m. So let's say like, I guess, I guess it could be like a VI 24 hour, right? Like it comes around the same time, but, I just wanted to put here the idea to understand that it's variable interval, like the time has to pass and then the next correct response. This is like checking like any type of Amazon thing or my Chewy packages, right? Like I know I ordered them and it could say like arriving today by 9 p.m. or something. And I'm like, all right, but I don't know when. So I keep going down to the mail room to check, right? But only after I check when it's delivered, will I actually get the reinforcement. But I still have that steady rate, kind of slow rate of responding because I don't know when. Love it. A fisherman casts his line about- Four fish fisherwoman, that's me. 
right? Or <laughs> Fisher woman casts his line about 15 times before he catches a fish. All right, got him a nice work, guys. Yeah. A VR 15. This is why I fish because I'm on a variable ratio schedule. I keep going, even though I might catch one fish one season, I will continue to cast my line. <laughs> and that's all we have for you today. If you want to check out more of our stuff or any of our classes where we get more detailed, you can go to studynotesaba.com. We have a ton of free stuff. I should have put that on here also on YouTube. You might be watching this on YouTube. And if you are, you better subscribe and leave a like, we live for that. Um, find us on Instagram. We have a lot of great content there too, at Study Notes ABA. And you could stalk Casey at contact at studynotesaba.com. She's super sweet. So you should really, she responds on an FR1, by the way. So <laughs> we could, thank you so much. And we are gonna be doing a lot more free classes now because we realize you guys love them. We've got good feedback. And that's all we have for you today. Thank you all for coming.